All right, guys, welcome back to s &R Ballistics. It is a little windy out here this morning. We wanted a uh, nice uh, still morning with some fog to do this video. And as you can see, we got a windy, cloudy morning. But uh, anyways, we're gonna be talking about black powder uh, percussion revolvers today. You can see we got a few out here. Uh, we're gonna shoot some of them, talk about some of them. Uh, but let's just get started. And I don't have the hat on today because uh, it's too windy and I don't have the earplugs in because I forgot to bring them down. But these black powders ain't that loud. So. cycle too far that way. This does that sometimes. Let's see if we can find that one that it cycled too far on. There we go. Alright. This uh, walker ain't exactly easy to uh, shoot one-handed very accurately uh, on account of the size. Uh, well, in comparison to the 1849, it's uh, quite a large pistol. I think this these weigh uh, just right close to five pounds when they're loaded, so they're pretty heavy pistols. Uh, anyways, uh, starting out with the order we got these laid in here, we got the 1847 Colt Walker. This one's an Army San Marco uh, replica from Italy. I think this one was made in the uh, early 80s, mid 80s, something like that. I bought it from a guy um, for $200. I really wanted one. Uh, you can see here, I thought I was cool back a few years ago and put my initials on there. And, uh, not exactly cool, but <laughs> that's that one. That was my first percussion revolver. Uh, then you got the 1849 Colt. This one is an original one. This one was made in 1864. Uh, we're not going to shoot it today because I need to replace the uh, cones in there. They're kind of uh, worn down, and so they don't go off very well. But this one is a 31 caliber, again, made in 1864 in the Colt factory. So that's a genuine Colt made during the Civil War. Probably not used in the Civil War, but made during the Civil War. Uh, next, we've got the 1851... <coughs> Uh, Navy. This is a second generation Colt, an early second generation Colt. You can see serial number 5734. So this would have been about 1500 guns or so, or 1300 guns into uh, production on the second generations. So this one was made in 1971. It's pretty early. Um, these ones, the second generations, it's kind of debated, you know, if they were made by Colt, if they weren't. From what I could tell, the C-Series, which were these ones you see with the high polish finish, um, they were made in the Colt factory by Colt. Now, I've heard some of the parts come from Italy and were finished by Colt, uh, like the cylinder and the trigger guard. I've heard all of it was made by Colt. Um, I've heard all the parts came from Italy and were finished by Colt. Um, but most people will agree that the second generation Colts are genuine Colts. Now the F series Colts uh, for the second generation, I think they started, they started the second generation in 1971 for the black powders. And I think in 1978, they switched to the F series and the F series from what I could gather uh, when I was reading about them were actually assembled in the uh, Ivor Johnson factory. I, I think I could be wrong on that, but I think they were assembled in the Ivor Johnson factory and then sent to Colt to be uh, finished and uh, looked over to make sure they were up to standard. Then you have the third generation Colts or the Signature Series Colts, and those were just made in Italy with the Colt name. They never actually were made in the Colt factory. But the second generation Colts, especially the uh, C Series, are usually considered to be genuine Colts. So that one's made in 1971. And then here we have uh, Garrett's first uh, percussion revolver. Last year I convinced him to buy one. That's actually when I bought my second gen Colt was when he bought this. 
Uh, this one's an 1860 Army replica made by Pieta in Italy. Uh, this one obviously is in the white and has a fluted cylinder, which is a little different than a lot of the ones you see. So we're going to let Garrett take a few shots with this, and then we'll show you how to load uh, on that second gen Colt. We'll show you how to load one of these. All right, guys. Today we're taking a look at the uh, 1860 Army made by Pieta. This is the in the white finish, so it uh, technically doesn't have a finish. It's just the bare metal, but polished. As you can see, it's getting a little cloudy, but uh, that's all right. Uh, 44 caliber ball in these. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna take six shots real quick. I think that's it. Six shots of black powder, 10 more minutes of reloading to load it back up. Guys, uh, if you know anything about percussion revolvers, uh, they're really fun. Uh, they're more of a uh, impractical way to shoot, but they are fun to load up. They're definitely fun to shoot once you get it all loaded up and whatnot. And it's relatively inexpensive. It's not too terrible to shoot these guns. Uh, you can find a variety of powder and balls and caps for these <clears throat> just about anywhere i've seen them at walmart bass pro um i think academy carries some if you've got any of those local to you and there's uh just a ton of websites that are dedicated to the black powder guns and uh have uh all this available to you and another thing is i don't know if it's federal or just depending on the state but you don't have to have a background check for these guns which is always nice and uh, just leaves one irritating step out of the way to get you a, a nice little pistol. But yeah, um, I'm not too familiar on the history with any of these. Uh, I just wanted to get into it because it is a, it is a fun little hobby and uh, it does uh, get you into the history of uh, older, older guns. But uh, my uh, first percussion revolver was actually a um, Italian made 1851 with a brass frame and Houston and I did some researching and we could not figure out what the brand of it was. It was probably just some way off brand of uh, a copy of a copy basically. And uh, it's broke right now, so it doesn't work. So we only brought out the, the uh, 1860 with us today. But this is a good gun. I picked this up on Gun Broker. I think I paid, uh, oh, I think it was, I think it was a uh, high 200s or low 300. I can't remember specifically, but it wasn't too bad. It was, it was used, but it was in good shape. Um, you know, different people make these kind of revolvers. You got the Colt, you got the Pieta, the Cimarron's, the Army San Marcos. Uh, there's a couple others that I can't remember, but uh, yeah, we'll let Houston load up the 51 for you, show you how that works, and. Uh, Give a little bit of some closing statements. All right, guys, before I uh, show you how to load this 51, I do want to make a uh, quick note. Uh, this was my first percussion revolver. And I'll say, if you're looking for a percussion revolver, well, the Walker is nice. And I believe the Dra Dragoon has the same thing. Uh, I can't remember. I don't have a Dragoon here to look at. But the Walker, you can see here, they have this uh, notch here for the safety. It's just a little circle hole. In later models, it's an actual notch all the way in. And the reason they changed that in real life in 1840, well, I think they changed it uh, in 1850 on these guns. I think the uh, Dragoon had the same thing, is because you guys noticed while I was shooting this, that causes what they call uh, cap sucking. So it'll suck the caps after you shoot it down into your action. It can jam up your gun. So uh, if you're looking for a percussion revolver you want to get into it or something uh the walker may not be the best first percussion pistol it kind of turned me off of percussion revolvers uh, when i first started because i was like 15 i didn't really understand all that stuff uh but if you like lonesome dove or something like myself which is why i got one in the first place then uh you know 
go for it. They're not, it's not that big of a pain, but that's just uh, something to note if you're looking for one of these. Um, also worth noting, I didn't mention that the 1849 uh, pocket revolver, which was actually Colt's most popularly sold pistol until the 1873 single action army, out of all their percussion revolvers, this one sold the most. Um, but, uh, the 14 or 1849 pocket revolver and the 1851 Navy actually both released the same year in 1850. Uh, I think the terms have just kind of come around for collectors, you know, or differentiate between the two, but these were actually both came out in 1850. And you can see that the 1849 is just a scaled down version of the 1851. Uh, this one does have the round trigger guard on it uh, because this is a replica of a uh, second model 51 Navy the first and second model had the square back the third model had the rounded uh, trigger guard and I I don't know if the 1849 ever had the square back trigger guard uh, it may have I can't remember but anyways to get to what you guys have been uh, waiting for here is how to load these things well, some of you guys may have been waiting for uh, today we're loading a triple seven 3f with these uh, three seven five diameter round balls, and our uh, forty four calibers were loaded with triple seven. This had twenty four grains of triple seven with uh, four five one round balls, and this one had about forty eight grains of triple seven uh, with four five one round balls. But we're gonna put twenty four grains. Well, why do that? I better put this on half cock. We're gonna put. 24 grains in here. Now I don't have the stands that a, a lot of guys have on here, so it kind of makes it a little harder to film the reloading. I gotta sit here and hold it the whole time. You just take your powder, pour it in. I think ideally in the 51, you kind of want like 21 grains or something like that uh, but I got a 24 grain spout so that's what we use in it and you'll notice whenever we shoot this one it doesn't hit quite as hard as the Walker or the 1860 because well it's gonna have the same amount of powder as the 1860 so it's a lighter bullet. It's going to be moving a little faster, but the Walker had twice the powder and a bigger caliber ball on it. So it was hitting a lot harder. And it's also worth noting, while well, we're just sitting here loading this, well, before I get to that, after you put your powder in, you're going to put your balls on. So you put a ball there. Now, you can also patch, uh, put patches, pre-lube patches, cardboard patches, whatever you want in between your powder and ball. Uh, they say that prevents chain fires. Uh, you can also lube the holes. Um, I've never, the only time I've ever had a chain fire was with 1849. And I think that has to do, as you guys can see, that thing's pretty loose, you know. So, probably just some spark gun in there. Now, usually, on my 44s, it does it. You want a lead ring to shave around the ball. On this one, it doesn't actually do it. These balls are a little bit small for these chambers. But they'll still work for now. But what I was going to say is, uh, because these... Uh, Percussion guns, black powder guns, whatever, muzzle loaders are not considered uh, firearms or guns under ATF rules. You, you can have them shipped straight to your door. You don't have to go through an FFL. Uh, you can also own them if you are a felon or something, if you want a way to defend yourself or something. You can carry one of these, but uh, at least here in Oklahoma you can. I know several states you can. I don't know if that's nationwide or state level that you can carry them. But it's also worth noting that, uh, you know, if you get pulled over or something and you got a gun, the cops, I've asked several cops, they didn't actually know that. So 
they might try to arrest you or something. If they do, I mean, I guess they would get thrown out because legally you're allowed to, but they may not know that. So it's just a couple of things worth noting there. So we get those good and compressed. You can see, even though it didn't shave a lead ring, you can kind of see that it does have a good seal in there. Uh, it started to shave one. So now for caps, we got these Remington number 10s. Uh, on the Walker and the 1860 CCI caps work as well. On this second gen Colt, I cannot get uh, CCI caps to stay on it. They're just flat too, either too big or too small, depending on if you're using 10s or 11s. And uh, these Remington ones are a tad loose, but they work pretty well on here. Well, I say that and then I just uh, drop the one. Now, a lot of guys you'll see will have like a wood dowel to push down on these. I don't have one, but you can use your finger. It's a little harder to use your finger, but it works. And you can see this pistol has some wear on it uh, back here on the back strap. But overall, it's, you know, it's got a few scratches, but it's in pretty good shape. And I only paid, I think, just over $400 for this before I had to pay shipping and all that. So after everything, about $500. So you can get into percussion shooting for relatively inexpensive. Uh, you know, you can get Italian replicas for even cheaper if you're getting used ones. Uh, even new ones you can get for cheaper than that. Unfortunately, we don't have any Remington replicas or any other Maker replicas. Uh, we just have the Colts here today. But once you get that all capped up, you see here, uh, you got these little safety notches. The Remingtons have them. Now on the Walker, it only has one. And on the 1849, it only has one. But on the 51 and 1860, it's got that notch there. That one in that hole in the hammer I showed you that on the Walker sucks caps. So then if you wanted to carry it, you're locked up nice and tight. It's not going to go off. You can holster it. I oh, actually have a holster on for it. Got to carry it down here. You can holster it. And if you're wondering where I got these holsters, uh, let's see, I can actually pull it up really fast. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, this is not sponsored, but on Etsy, uh, his holsters, just the holster without the belt, cost about $80, I, I think. Uh, let's see uh, if we see any more of his holsters come up. Uh, right here, $74. I got one for my uh, 1849. I got one for, this actually uh, goes on my, or with my 1875 Remington replica, but the 1860 fits in it, so we brought it down here. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead and take a few shots with this since we got it loaded up here. Caps tried to come off on me there. Okay. Let's see, I think. Did they all go off? Nope. Yeah, we still got one that the cap fell off of, so see the smoke coming out of the barrel maybe i don't know if you guys can see that on camera but it's always one of the fun parts about shooting percussion revolvers Anyways, uh, that's all there really is to loading them. I guess I'll quickly show you too how you take one of these down. This one comes apart the easiest aside from the 1849, but this doesn't have an actual barrel wedge in it. So I'll show you how to take this one down. For a Colt, this wedge, you, you got that little arm there. You gotta kinda push that arm down and then push the wedge through, pull that out. And then a lot of times you can just pull the barrel off but if you can't, you use the ramrod, put it right there, push it right off, and you can pull this off. 
Uh, you got this grease gear. I actually always just grease this with beef tallow, which works pretty decent. Of course, when it's cold, it gets a little stiff. You know, it's not going to spin around a lot. And once it gets hot, you know, in the summertime, that thing will just spin right around. Uh, but that tallow is a bit cool right now. Uh, of course, some of the replicas, the 1847 and 1860, you've about got to pound the wedges out. You can't just push them out like you can on this one. Uh, actually, the 1847 was so bad, the Walker, when I first got it, I had to take and grind, uh, literally grind the wedge down a bit, and it's still ridiculously tight. You can see where I ground it here. I ground the top the bottom, but you can see also where from pounding it in and out, this wedge is just all beat up because it was so tight to get in and out. Uh, still can't get it out by hand, but you can now at least beat it out with a screwdriver or something with the end of a screwdriver. But that's really all we got on this video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to just show you a little bit of the contrast between different makers. Uh, the qualities, uh, I would say, uh, starting at the lowest, would be that cheap, uh, the no-name brass frame 1851 that Garrett had. I actually forgot about that one. Then you come up to this Colt Walker. Um, then you come up to the 1860, the Pieta. Uh, that's an Army San Marco. This one's a Pieta. Pieta New Birdies are really nice. This one actually also has a uh, replaced trigger bolt spring. The trigger bolt spring uh, broke. So we put a lighter one in there. So this thing has a real light trigger pull. I mean, this is just a smooth gun. But that would be the next. And then, of course, depending on quality, it would be a toss up between these two. Uh, this one I think would be the highest just because this one is so worn out. But obviously if you find a nice first generation Colt, they're excellent guns. But uh, this one just super smooth, comes apart easy. The finish, the fit and finish is just perfect on it. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, so I would say out of all the ones we have out here, this one is probably the best quality that we got. But again, you can find nice first generation Colts that are even nicer than this. Uh, but that's all we got about the guns really today. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors at Haskell Gun and Pond for their help. Um, like, share, and subscribe comment uh, if you have a percussion revolver if you want to get into percussion revolvers any questions we'd be happy to answer uh to the best of our ability if we don't know we'll find it out for you um yeah that's all we got so we'll see you next time and have a good one